Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Galaxy 2. I don't know about you, but these four Mario games have had an extremely huge impact on my childhood growing up. There was something special about moving Mario around and collecting star after star as a kid. But now as an adult, I'm always looking for new ways to experience some of my favorite games that I enjoyed as a child. This curiosity made me stumble upon the concept of what many content creators call the God Run. The concept is pretty straightforward. Take a series of games and try to complete them all back to back without taking hits, without taking damage, or sometimes just not taking a death. These type of runs have become extremely popular with the From Software Dark Souls games. Streamers would test their limits by not taking a single hit and beating each game in the series. Any hit in any of the games would send the challenger back two, three, sometimes four games to the start of the series. As new games were made, the God Run became longer, harder, and more devastating. Watching these runs, my mind started to go down an extremely dangerous rabbit hole. What if I took this concept and applied it to those four Mario games? What if, instead of bosses, I attempted to get every single star in those four games without taking a single hit? 602 stars, four games, zero mistakes. The more I thought about the idea, the more crazier it seemed, and yet the more I was drawn to it. And from this craziness, the 602 Super Mario Damageless God Run was born. This series goal is to showcase this challenge. The highs, the lows, the victories, the defeats, all through the eyes of me. I eat your pie. Come along this multi-year journey as I take on the greatest challenge of my gaming life. And watch along as well over at my Twitch, twitch.tv slash IHRPI. So how does one start a challenge like this? Well, my first step in this long journey was to play all four games in a row and chronicle every hit I took along the way. I needed to get a feel for all four games to find out what exactly I was about to take on. Over the course of seven days and almost 50 hours, I went through each game and kept track of every single hit. In total, I ended up taking 572 hits over all four games on the initial run. Here's the breakdown. In Super Mario 64, 11 hits. In Super Mario Galaxy, 151 hits. In Super Mario Sunshine, 182 hits. And in Super Mario Galaxy 2, 228 hits. Through the first run of all four games, I came to a few conclusions. First, this challenge would absolutely take me a couple years to feasibly complete, along with thousands of hours of practicing each game. Two, I was going to need to focus on each game one at a time and beat them individually, damageless, before I could do all four back to back. Three, Super Mario Galaxy 2 was absolutely going to be the most challenging, and Super Mario 64 was probably going to be the easiest. And four, Super Mario Sunshine's final boss accounted for the most hits out of the entire run with taking almost a third of my entire Super Mario Sunshine hits on that fight alone. So with the initial run in the books, it was time to start the grind on my first game. I had my sights set on Super Mario 64, and while it was the easiest of the four games, boy was I in for a rude awakening. Super Mario 64, the game that started it all. I have so many memories of playing this game as a kid, running it from my local blockbuster, getting really close to beating it and then having to take it back and hope that I could somehow get the same save file when I rented it again next time. This playthrough of Super Mario 64 will be a lot different than those of Childhood Pie, 
So before we start this journey, it's important to break down my initial strategy on how I want to tackle this game. Super Mario 64 levels can be broken down into four main areas of Princess Peach's castle. You've got the lobby, which contains levels that you unlock with just a few stars. The basement, which requires at least eight stars in defeating Bowser in the Dark World to get a key. Upstairs, which requires 30 stars and beating Bowser in the Fire Sea. And finally, Tippy Top, which requires getting 50 stars. The further you progress through Peach's castle, the more difficult the levels become and the more pressure I'll feel as I get closer and closer to the final goal of 120 stars. The great thing about Super Mario 64 is that once you get eight stars to unlock Bowser in the Dark World, the order in which you do the stars is extremely up to you. In fact, there's a known skip that is used in the 16 star run called Mips Clip which allows you to bypass the 30 star requirement to do Bowser in the Fire Sea and unlock even more of the castle. I'll be opting to not do any major glitches or skips that are used to navigate the hub world, so I'll need the exact amount of stars that the game wants in order to progress through each area. So let's talk about our first big goal here, Bowser in the Fire Sea, 30 stars, plus one quick star in Dire Dire Docks locks this behemoth of a level for our damageless run. Lava everywhere? Check. Extremely scary enemy placement? Check. Extremely punishing boss fight at the end? Check. But before we can even dream about conquering Bowser in the Fire Sea, we have to first get 30 stars. Now there are two ways I could go about getting those 30 stars. We could one, rush 30 easy stars and get to Bowser in the Fire Sea pretty consistently every time, or we can knock out two of the hardest levels in Lethal Lava Land and Shifting Sands Land on route to Bowser in the Fire Sea. Both have their merits, as easy levels means more consistent attempts, but I'm opting to take out Lethal Lava Land and Shifting Sands Land first. The sooner I can consistently beat these hard levels, while also knocking out Bowser in the Fire Sea, the more success we will have later on in the run. So here's my overall route on my path to Fire Sea and beyond. Number one, we want to get Chain Chop Star in Bomb Bomb Field. Then we'll immediately pivot to getting seven stars in Womp's Fortress for eight total stars. After that, we gotta grab the key from Bowser in the Dark World plus two stars from the slide, plus get wing cap for 12 total stars. Then we'd get seven stars from Lethal Lava Land, seven stars from Shifting Sands Land, and then get four quick easy stars in the castle to round out our total of 30 stars, giving us all that we need to access Fire Sea. With the plan laid out and my confidence at an all time high, <laughs> I set out for the greatest challenge I'd ever embark on. Let's get this first run going. So the first big hurdle of the run is Womp's Fortress. One of the first things you'll notice is I'm doing a very common Super Mario 64 clip called Canyonless. Fun fact, Damageless is literally impossible without this trick. Using the cannon to get the star the way it's intended forces you to take damage. So almost every run will follow me clipping through for the star. The setup is as follows. Get to this spot right next to the beam. Clip Mario's toes. Turn Mario around. Walk off the ledge. Get back up. Backflip. Hit the left C button twice while the backflip is happening. Punch once. Slowly hold down on the control stick. Hit the right C button, followed by the left C button. Get up and then hold the control stick down the entire way. If done correctly, Cannon Star is yours and without damage to boot. With Cannonless done, I pressed on for more stars. The final star of this level is easily the hardest, the Dumb Owl Star. Now there is a way to get this star without the owl, and speedrunners use it all the time, but we're going for consistency to avoid taking damage. So I'll be riding this little owl every single 
time. When you grab him, the camera is awful and navigating to the cage can be extremely disorienting. And if I somehow miss landing on the star, there's a decent chance I'll take damage. So after becoming an owl tamer, I've collected my first eight stars and it's time to defeat Bowser in the dark world. We're going to need to dodge streams of fire, floating electric orbs, and awful camera angles. Luckily, on most of these attempts, I'll clear it with no issue. It helps a ton that Bowser 1 is a pretty big jump. While this level can appear scary, it really isn't all that bad at all. Now that I have the key, it's time to do a little cleanup with these two slides while also getting the wing cap. The wing cap this early is actually extremely important. Why? Well, this little box here. Turns out lava plus quicksand that instantly kills you is pretty bad. But God bless Miyamoto, he put this wing cap box in both Lethal Lava Land and Shifting Sands Land, making them both easier to navigate safely. If you've played this game casually, you'll probably know that there is a Koopa Shell box in Lethal Lava Land that helps you navigate the lava. Unfortunately, you need to get four episode stars before this box even spawns. So this little red box here is going to be a great bridge until we get there. So let's tackle this level. Everything was going great in my first trip to Lethal Lava Land. I was bullying the bullies. I was putting together puzzles for red coins. And I was soaring high with my wing cap grabbing stars. But everything changed the moment we went from air to sea and swapped to the Koopa Shell. 100 coins in Lethal Lava Land is an extremely scary star. In order to get it safely, I have to surf on this Koopa shell and grab a lot of coins that are chilling over lava. That's where this random fireball spawned on the map. And just like that, my first run went down in flames. And we went all the way back to the start. And well, my second run didn't fare much better as I flubbed a jump and cooked Mario's cheeks. Finally, on my third run, I finally broke through and made it to Shifting Sands Land. As mentioned previously, this level also features a wing cap and a Koopa Shell. The Koopa Shell is available at the beginning, but is notorious for breaking at the worst times. So I'm opting to conquer the level via the wing cap. A big part of this level is the pyramid in the middle. Inside are quite a few stars. In fact, you cannot get the 100 coin star in this level without entering the pyramid. There are two entrances into the pyramid. The main entrance, this is always open, but plops you at the bottom of the pyramid, making it difficult to climb up. And by landing on all four pillars, the top blows off, allowing you quick and easy access to multiple stars, as well as a ton of coins that are at the top of the pyramid. I opted for the pillars, as easy access to those stars was too good to pass up. My first run in SSL unfortunately died to a well-placed babam. Oh. Come on, man! And from that moment on, my greatest fear began to be realized, as basement began to slowly kill run. No, no, not again! Not again! Get out of here! <laughs> what? After run after run <laughs> and the frustrations started to mount as both lethal lava land and shifting sands land took their turns ending runs whether it was random bullies or struggling to get a hundred coins in ssl the hits started to mount even bowser who's extremely easy got in the mix of killing runs finally on run number nine after resetting over and over and over on LLL and SSL, I broke through.
I had done it. I had finally conquered both Lethal Lava Land and Shifting Sands Land. I had 27 stars, and I had easy access to three stars. After hours of dying to the basement, it was finally time for me to face Bowser in the Fire Sea. Little did I know that the Fire Sea was the least of my worries. Enjoyed the video? Make sure to subscribe on YouTube for future updates. And if you're interested to see me take on the challenge live, follow me on Twitch. See you next time.